This was actually um, Mark's selection, not John's to start off the show, just so we're clear. Mark is throwing it back. 27-20 victory for the Kansas City Chiefs last night at Arrowhead Stadium. Won it by a uh, toenail, I guess you could say. Woo-hoo! Man, oh, man. Had My the heart s- was beating so fast. I bet. I bet. I Mine was, too. It. Absolutely. I mean, that was quite a finish last night out at Arrowhead Stadium. But unlike last season, the Chiefs are 1-0. and Last year, they lost to start off the year against the Detroit Lions. This year, they, of course, get that victory last night. It was a rocking scene out at Arrowhead Stadium. And overall, yesterday was an awesome day for America. The Chiefs are 1-0. There was, I guess, some controversy buzzing last night into this morning about Taylor Swift and Brittany Mahomes not sitting together. What might be the driver behind that? Come on. She's a real beauty. What might be the driver behind that? I don't know. But we can have that speculation throughout the day and see how that maybe plays out if anybody says anything or puts anything up on social media. Um, (laughs) We'll have to see, John. I saw that story, and I saw it on Fox News of all places. Yeah, I, thought, I know. What are you pushing here? Because she was on TV sitting right next to Ed. Yeah, Has Ed not come out and said who he's voting for? Or I don't know. I, no, I believe he's indicated. Oh, I don't he know has. He's come right out. But, gotcha. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's... I mean, she's got no choice, though. If that's her father-in-law, I guess you can make that case, right? You can pick your friends. You can't pick your family. Well, just to suggest <laughs> that her seating selection was a political statement I, yes. is, you know... I totally agree with that. Kind of off the base here, because, it, like I say, I saw her on with Ed right up front. People love the drama. The Daily Mail, Fox, been all over that. So, yes, you're right. People are looking into that just a little too much. They were hanging out in Rhode Island, by the way, like two weekends ago. So, let's pump the brakes on that drama. I did um, find myself just a couple of boxes over there from Taylor. So my wife got a video of Taylor that I put up on my Instagram stories last night. So if you want to see it, that's where it is. And, um, (laughs) you know, it's weird to watch her cheer along for the game. But she was into it. I got to give her credit. She was into it. She was fired up. It seemed very genuine and authentic. So I'll I'll give her that much. But, um, you know, kind of bounce around and... Got the voice going, and um, we're going to have McGraw-Millhaven, KTRS Radio in St. Louis, in for our featured Friday guest at 9.05 this morning. He was here for the game last night. Really interesting guy. Been in Missouri uh, for 25 years now in the radio landscape. And somebody who, I will add, um, just has an interesting career path, played baseball at Nebraska, the whole thing. So we've got a fun morning ahead here on KCMO. Kendall Gammon is one hour away. Now, on the economic news, we are getting a big economic report this morning at 735. So we will get a jobs report at 735 this morning, and that is going to go a long way to determining whether or not the Fed will cut interest rates. So that's worth watching, and we'll have that reaction in an hour and 20 minutes. And on the economy, well, this came down yesterday, Donald Trump was at the Economic Club in New York and delivered one of his better speeches in recent memory where he talked about where the economy's at, how bad the economy is right now for millions of Americans, and talked about things he would do on day one to start turning this thing around. First... I will end Kamala Harris's anti-energy crusade and implement a policy of energy abundance, energy independence, and even energy dominance. We have more liquid gold under our feet than any other country, including Russia and Saudi Arabia. We'll be using it. My plan will cut energy prices in half or more than that within 12 months of taking office. It will be an economic revival of our country like no one has ever seen before. Energy was what caused our problem initially. Energy is going to bring us back. That means we're going down and getting gasoline below 
$2 a gallon, bring down the price of everything from electricity rates to groceries, airfares, and housing costs. That was uh, Donald Trump yesterday. Economic Club in New York gave about an hour-long speech there. And I thought it was one of his most powerful speeches. Now, yes, there was all the Trump bluster and the hyperbole and everything else, but that just comes with Donald Trump. I mean, you know, that's just what you get. You're going to get the hyperbole. But when you cut through that, what you got was a speech and a guy who clearly has a vision and a plan for how to get America back on track economically and get a robust middle class back in place. And he's right. It does all start with energy. Have you heard Kamala Harris say a peep about how to get energy prices down, which is actually the quickest way to tamp down inflation because energy impacts literally everything, right? It impacts the grocery bill because the groceries got to get from point A to the food store. It impacts, obviously, your energy prices in your home. It impacts every single part of our economy. And it was filling up yesterday before going out to Arrowhead, and it was $2.99 a gallon. And, you know, it's obviously been worse than that the last three and a half years. But remember, you have had an administration that, in part, has taken our strategic reserves, meant for, like, God forbid, wartime, and drained some of our strategic reserves in recent months and years to try to tamp down and keep down gasoline prices. Strategic reserves are not intended to help Joe Biden politically during an election year. And it wasn't just this year. He's done that on and off over the last two and a half years. And the energy policies of this administration has also done what? It's emboldened bad actors around the world. Iran. It's emboldened Russia. If we are not leading the way, If we are not doing everything in our power to maximize our energy production, and that doesn't mean put a new dopey wind turbine in western Kansas or northwestern Missouri. That means actually having a plan in place to drill baby drill and to get as much possibly done as we can when it comes to independent energy production. And the rest of the world benefits as well because then we're exporting more than ever. So that's not going to solve everything. It's not. But when Donald Trump says the first thing I can do in office is have solid America first energy policy to start the ball rolling in the right direction, he's right. And if people are going to try to tell you that this guy doesn't have a clear vision or a clear plan, you can say a lot of things about Donald Trump, but he's got this plan. Now, his goal has to be to make sure he doesn't step on any rakes and people are talking about his plan. The fact that today we're going to be talking about Donald Trump, Donald Trump's energy plan, his economic plan, that's good. That's where we want to be talking about when it comes to Donald Trump. 614 on a Chiefs victory Friday. The NFL season kicking off last night. Chiefs get it done 27 to 20 at Arrowhead over the Baltimore Ravens. We'll have Kendall Gamma next hour on this. On KCMO Talk Radio, 95.7 FM, and streaming on the KCMO Talk Radio app. Now, in the meantime, on the other side, Joe Biden admitted something yesterday that, in large part, got overlooked. What was it? I will share it with you coming up next on KCMO Talk Radio. So Joe Biden is in uh, Wisconsin yesterday. I guess he didn't want to come to Kansas City eat a little barbecue, go to the Chiefs game last night, try to beg Taylor Swift for an endorsement of Kamala Harris. None of that ended up happening last night. And thank goodness, by the way. Instead, we got a big Chiefs win, and we got Donald Trump giving a great speech at the New York Economic Club yesterday. And Joe Biden's in Wisconsin. And he's announcing $7 billion in rural investments during this visit to Wisconsin. So in classic fashion, basically, they're going up trying to buy votes in different parts of the country. So he announced $7 billion in investments for 16 co-ops that will provide electricity for millions of families in rural areas across 23 states. Funding for the project comes from the Democrats 
You remember this? Inflation Reduction Act. Yes, that gem. I'm not worth your red lobster money. Come on, 360 plus billion dollars in that Inflation Reduction Act back in the summer of 2022, which did very little outside of continue 40 year highs in inflation during that period of time. Well, Joe Biden admitted something yesterday during this speech in Wisconsin. And I thought to myself, well, he went off teleprompter. He probably didn't mean to be saying this, but at least he's being honest. My uh, my investments that through my investments, the most significant climate change law ever. And by the way, it is a three hundred sixty nine billion dollar bill. It's called the. Uh, we, we should have named it what it was, but it, but at any rate. <sighs> Come on, man. We should have named it what it was, but at uh, any rate. Yeah, what they should have named it was the Green New Deal. That's what they should have named it. And it's not just about, you know, the deal in Wisconsin that Joe Biden talked about yesterday. Quentin Lucas had a post up on X. This was on Tuesday. And it was from his official account, not his personal account. So I don't think he actually puts up these posts on X. But it came from the official Mayor Quentin Lucas account. And he was bragging about the Inflation Reduction Act. He wrote here on Tuesday evening... Mayor Lucas secured a $9 million federal grant made possible through the Biden-Harris administration's Inflation Reduction Act to develop a building performance standards policy, helping us improve energy efficiency in Kansas City buildings. Can you explain to me why that requires $9 million of federal funding? And what that has to do with reducing inflation. They spent $360 billion on this bill. It's two years later. Nobody knows where a lot of the money is. I don't, do you? You heard about where the $360 billion went? Apparently, they still got plenty of money from somewhere. Oh, our great-great-grandkids, by the way. Joe Biden's now got $7 billion to invest in rural co-ops around the country. Kansas City, according to Mayor Lucas this week, is getting $9 million in a federal grant to develop buildings, building performance standards. Why does that require $9 million from the feds? Huh. By the way, in the press release here on KCMO's official government website, it says it more than doubled the $3.8 million originally requested. Gosh, they're so good at just giving away other people's money. They are experts at giving away our money to other cities, other states, other taxpayers. They're fantastic at it. And I'm still confused as to what exactly this has to do with anything around reducing inflation. But once again, it's never about what they say it's about, right? It sounds good. Imagine passing hundreds of billions of dollars in bills with money you don't have and then say you're reducing inflation when technically that will do nothing but the opposite. When you devalue the dollar because you're printing money that isn't actually real, what does that do? If they create more dollars out of thin air, the dollars that I have in my pocket, the dollars that you have in your pocket, if you've got any left, are worth less money. That dollar today is not worth what it was 40 years ago. Trust me, what can you get with a buck these days anyway? Heck, John goes to the vending machine for his Dr. Pepper. It's like three fifty now. It's ridiculous. And they That's charge like him at the casino. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. Changes jingling. <laughs> exactly right. And if you use a card on that dopey vending machine, they upcharge you as well. It's ridiculous. At a principle, I don't use the vending machine in this building. I'm going to buy John a 30-pack of Dr. Peppers next time I go to Costco <laughs> because it's getting ridiculous, the price of the vending machines around here. I, I, I see the guys. They fill them up. They're nice guys. But it's completely ridiculous. So when Joe Biden comes out yesterday in Wisconsin and says, yeah, we should have named it something else, I got a great name idea for you. The Screw America Bill. Because that's what it's done over the last two years. $360 billion dollars. 
I'm sure there have been some big time lobbyists and donors who have gotten very rich off of the Inflation Reduction Act. But meantime, what's happened on Main Street? What's happening to you, the small business owner? Well, you've got nothing but fleeced. Because you didn't see any windfall off of this, right? Normal people didn't. But you did suffer the consequences of inflation. And that's why when you look at what's happening today, it is going to be a very critical day for the next two months in this economy. Depending on what happens with this jobs report, it will likely go a long way to determining what the Fed does with interest rate cuts, which you know they'll be deciding later this month. So that's why today matters. And if you get an interest rate cut, which I believe is going to happen. I don't think it necessarily should happen right now, but I believe it's going to happen. Powell does not want to be behind the curve on any kind of recession like he was behind the curve on inflation three years ago when he and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris were talking about how it was transitory. So I think they'll do a small cut. And then what happens after that? If they do a small cut, and there's a perception that the economy is improving, well, obviously that helps Kamala Harris. Now, it might be too late, and the reality is Kamala Harris has no policy to speak of on the economy. She, I mean, she doesn't. Her people don't. They talk about price gouging, except for when she calls it price gauging. That's it. That's the only thing that she's got going for her and her campaign. Uh, we're going to fight the corporate big guys and price gauging, gouging, gouging, gauging. That's not policy. It's not the real world. I mean, unless you want to become a third world banana republic, which some people might be just fine with, but that's not real economic policy. So instead, you get that or you get Donald Trump, who was at the Economic Club in New York yesterday, laying out serious policies on energy on reducing corporate taxes even further if you keep your business in America and talking about trying to get rid of government waste. And by the way, he talked about using Elon Musk to head a task force that would look at government waste. I can't think of the left's worst nightmare than Donald Trump winning the presidency and hiring Elon Musk to check in and oversee government waste. Oh, man, that would be a thing of beauty. Coming up on KCMO Talk Radio. Was this the most important thing that this person has ever said on this show yesterday? Do not miss it. We'll expand on it next on 95.7 FM KCMO. I've come to the conclusion that of um, all the things Quint Lucas has said on this show over six and a half years. Yesterday was the most important thing he has ever said on this show. Not just because the quality of what he said was important, but because it did take some risk for him to say what he said yesterday on this show. As we were talking about, you know, the crime issues here in Kansas City continuing to be completely out of line. While, yes, homicides are down about 25 percent year over year. That's a good thing. There are still way too many shootings. There are still way too many criminals running around the streets of this town. And a lot of them, by the way, are juveniles. In fact, the criminals are younger than ever before. Just like what you saw happen a week ago yesterday or a week ago, I guess nine days ago now, with Sean Brady of Brady and Fox. His car is getting burglarized. He comes out, tries to interrupt, and he ends up getting killed allegedly, by a couple of juveniles. So, Quentin Lucas, I asked him yesterday about a post he put up on X. And here's part of what he had to say in response to my question, which you'll hear first. The X post you put up last week, and and you just referenced it there, quote, if you have a son, you need to be in his life, you need to care, you need to steer him right, forget about what the relationship is with his mom, your son, our society, all of us need you there. Um, You know, that's... I think that's a very common sense thing to say. The data shows that if your father's present, you have a much better chance to get to places in life that a lot of us want to get to. You mentioned, obviously, you're a product of a single mother, but the data shows that you're somebody who bucked the trend. 
Now, yeah. a lot of us would look at this and say, this is common sense. But if I say it, it's perceived in a certain way versus, let's say, if you say it. So why did you feel yeah. it was important to say that? Uh, because I think fundamentally, and look, we we are going to enforce. We are going to arrest. The the news is already out. I already have a proposal that gets us to at least 150 detention beds, and I hope before the end of 2025, and it won't be that terribly expensive. We're going to do the stuff that we need to do. But I think we all, if we're just being real, understand that if we have a bunch of boys who are running around who never got raised by anybody telling them what's right, what's wrong, how to how to go straight and narrow, what to do, the pride in having a family. You know, I was knocked a little bit last week, but I was traveling with uh, my wife and my two boys. And I'll tell you what, you have young kids, Pete. It can be a pain in the rear with two kids under three years old. But you know what? There's something special about that. And we have got to teach that to more people. We've got to get more men involved in these sorts of uh, – in this upbringing or else we're going to kind of be chasing our tails for the next 20, 30 years. And, and I know part of it sounds controversial, and this isn't me going all you know high and mighty and puritanical. I am <laughs> – I'm a sinner like anyone else. I, I have to pray to make sure that I'm doing right too, but I just think fundamentally – and that's why I mentioned regardless of relationship with the mother, just have a role in your kid's life. You don't have to be the perfect guy. You don't have to do anything, but I think we need to do a lot more that says we got to do something more with these young people. Because what I'm worried about isn't just the 15 year old from last week who takes a heinous decision to take someone's life and the other teenagers who are involved and the teenagers who were involved in the murder of Lisa Lopez Galvan. And, and it goes on and on in this city. He's right. He's absolutely right. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't do a good job prosecuting criminals, getting them off the streets, putting them in jail so they're not repeat offenders. All of those things absolutely need to be done. That's the law enforcement part of this, right? But then there's the societal part of this. It's just like what teachers are dealing with. Like, they can only do so much as a teacher when they go home to a disastrous situation with their home lives. So what Quentin Lucas is talking about is the 25-year plan, the generational plan on how we reduce crime. And we talked about it yesterday. If you missed it, it's up on the podcast. You should be subscribed to our podcast. That way, if you ever miss anything, you can go take a listen to it um, on iTunes, on Spotify. Just search Pete Mundo and find it there. But yes, there's enforcement. There's making sure that cops are arresting bad guys. Prosecutors are putting them in jail. All that is absolutely true. That's the short term. The long term is this, the generational side, and making sure that men are fathers, that you're not just having babies and running away and not raising your children. And the reality is this, he knows who he's speaking to, we know who he's speaking to. The facts are the facts. Some people are going to want to sugarcoat them. Some people are going to want to beat around the bush. The reality is this. When you break down the racial groups, young black children at a 63% rate are in single-parent households. For white children, it is 24%. Both numbers are way too high. For Asians, it is 16%. They are the lowest by far. They also happen to be the racial group that ends up getting the most education in this country and making the most amount of money in this country. Asian Americans, not whites, Asian Americans. These things weave together. These things make a difference. And for Quentin Lucas to say it, now he may say something completely different next week. I don't know. But the fact that he was willing to put that up on social media, take a little heat, come on this show and expand on those comments yesterday and say enough's enough. And he's right. You know, when you're a parent, and many of you know this, when you're a parent, it does change your perspective. And he was really right when he talked about what a pain in the butt it is to travel with little kids. But you know what? As a parent, you're proud of it. You wouldn't change it. You have pride in being the head of the household. Whether you're a father or a mother, you take pride in that role. And for too many, whether it's cultural or otherwise, they don't have that pride. And here's the worst part. It's so cyclical. If you don't grow up without a father and then you have a child, you say, whatever, I didn't have a dad. Why am I going to bother? 
and this thing just snowballs. And there's not a government program that's going to fix this. I don't care how much money Joe Biden wants to allocate from the Inflation Reduction Act to fight this stuff, as I put up my air quotes, but it's not going to make a difference. It's not going to change the equation. There's no government money or program that will fix it. You need parents to be parents, and specifically, you need fathers to be fathers for young men. And that is how, over the long haul, you get crime under control. And you bring self-responsibility back into the equation. But that's also something people don't want to touch with a 10-foot pole. Because there's one political party in particular that's like, you know, this whole self-responsibility thing, it's overblown anyway. Like, what's the big deal? It's overblown. 913-408-7957. That's our studio line and our uh, text line on KCMO Talk Radio. Happy Friday to you. After a Chiefs win, Maria is in Kansas City. Hi, Maria. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, Pete? It's Friday, Maria. I'm doing well. What's happening? Good. Hey, you know what? I work with those kids that um, Mayor Lucas is talking about. And everything he did say and everything you are saying is true. And I think the the key here is, as a Christian, the church needs to stand up. The men of the in the church need to stand up alongside these young men and mentor them. We need mentors for these for these young men. They don't have anyone, um, and that's not to make excuses. At the same time, this is also the the county executive ha- or not the county executive. The Jackson County prosecutor has set a precedent of not prosecuting crime and even though they do not uh, she does not deal with minors she does set a precedent in both areas of both of the adult and juvenile detentions Mm -hmm. and i think we need to really this is why it's so important for this next week or this next election to vote for someone who does who will set that precedent of i will prosecute crime and that's why i'm just going to say it that's why we need to vote Tracy Chapel for Jackson County Prosecutor. She has worked with both groups of, uh, of criminals, groups, and so she will do a great job. And so that's what I'm going to do is vote Tracy Chapel if you want to change. Thank you, Maria. I appreciate Thank that. You. 913-408-7957. Um, we're, we know both prosecutorial candidates. Tracy Chapel running as the Republican, Melissa Johnson running as the Democrat for Jackson County Prosecutor. I, I need to reach out to both candidates. You're hearing this before they are, but I want to try to get them in studio for a debate at some point in the next two months. Right here in the KCMO Talk Radio studios. Let's go. Let's make it happen. I think we can because it is the most important local race in Kansas City, and it is not even close. 913-408-7957. It's 644 and a Chiefs victory Friday morning here on KCMO Talk Radio. Kendall Gammon will join me just after 7 o'clock. We'll tell you who was rocking the Butker jerseys last night as well. A specific and very interesting group was decked out in Butker jerseys, and we'll get to your calls on 95.7 FM. Hey, it's a step in the right direction, that's for darn sure. 650, Chiefs get a win 27-20 last night over the Baltimore Ravens by a, not even a foot, a toenail. That's how good it was. Kendall Gammon just after 7 o'clock will join us. We got a jobs report dropping at 7.30 this morning, which will go a long way to determining the next two months in this economy and what the perception is about this economy ahead of the election. So that is uh, 40 minutes away. We'll have it all covered for you here on KCMO Talk Radio. In the meantime, Quentin Lucas, importantly noting yesterday on this show that fathers matter. And as many of you texted in yesterday, this is one of the great missed opportunities by Barack Obama. He could have been the guy who could have carried that message who could have been the guy who ultimately came out and said, listen, the victim card is done. We need to take care of our own. And by our own, what I mean by that is as men, we need to take care of our own families. And that would have applied to all men. But the data is the data. And the data shows that 63% 
of black children are in single parent households, 24 percent for whites, 16 percent for Asian Americans. And it's Asian Americans who ultimately had the most success financially in this country and get the most education. And it ties back to what's going on in the household. So I give them a lot of credit for that. Mike's in Kansas City. Mike, you're on KCMO. What's happening? Yeah, he's gone against 60 years of uh, basic uh, core Democrat principles. Ever since the Great Society program and later into the feminist movement, uh, the role of men in society and families has been greatly downplayed. So why? Why society, You're right. So why do you think he did that yesterday? I'm genuinely curious. Why do you think he did that? Is he seeing the light uh, or is it something else? I think it's on a cutting edge. I think you're seeing a lot of it. You're seeing, you know, uh, children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren from the great society that are realizing, whoa, you know, they messed us up. And uh, I had an African-American tell me that the great society program is equivalent to what they did to the Native Americans on the reservations. And the Native Americans that stayed in the reservations withered, and the Native Americans that ignored the reservations, you know, prospered. And it's the same thing we're seeing now. You go to uh, Kansas City North and Gladstone areas, all the African-American people that moved out of the inner city that have nuclear families and everything, they're doing fine. But you follow what the government said, and, you know, you you stay in that whole system, that whole thing. Uh, You know, you're not – you're going to – like Baltimore or any of these other uh, places, you know, the places just deteriorate. But it doesn't just hold with – it doesn't just hold with uh, the black community, even the white community. When you have uh, families without uh, fathers, you're seeing the same situation. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. You're seeing the same numbers. It's exactly. Yeah. It's cross. The commonality is not the race. The commonality is the lack of a father, and how that sets back the household. Eighty-five percent of juveniles who are incarcerated don't have fathers. That's irrelevant, nothing to do with the race. 85% of incarcerated youths came from fatherless households. Now, obviously, the racial makeup is going to matter because of the racial makeup of those without fathers. But it goes to show you the commonality is not the skin color. The commonality is is not having a father in the household. That's the commonality. And Mike's also right to note there that there is a segment to this in all racial groups, including, you know, the white victim mentality. It exists as well, right? I mean, you know, there are stories. J.D. Vance comes from a story like that, where you kind of get into this cycle of no dads around, no father presence, It's a different place than what you see in the black community, but its existence for the white community also very much exists. And there is a victim mentality to that as well. And that's why everyone's got to attack it from all angles, but Quint Lucas doing it is also notable. Paul, go ahead. You're on KCMO. Yeah, about the $9 million grant uh, for energy in Kansas City buildings. Uh, Pete, just uh, turn out the lights when you leave the room. There's a hundred k right there, so let's keep moving forward. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you, Paul. Pete, I would. You bet. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, now, as we approach 7 o'clock, um, this is from last night at the Chiefs game. Lisa Lopez Galvan, the lady who, of course, lost her life at the Super Bowl parade she was a dj in this town and her family was out in full force ahead of the chiefs opener yesterday they were out in lot e at arrowhead stadium and what's interesting and we knew that she was a big harrison butker fan but the family honored her by rocking harrison butker jerseys There's a picture of them on Tony's Kansas City I'm looking at here, which was linked to uh, Woke 41, that has all of them in white Harrison Butker jerseys out in Lot E getting set for the game last night. And I don't know what her politics are. I don't much care. It doesn't matter. I don't know what the family's politics are. It doesn't really matter. But I will say this. You know, as people around the world tried to cancel Harrison Butker, Over the last three and a half to four months, it is very clear Kansas City is having none of it. 
And Lisa Lopez Galvan's family could have said, you know what, Bucker's kind of controversial. I know she was a fan, but let's just all wear Mahomes jerseys, you know? Like, you can't go wrong with the Patrick Mahomes jersey. He's beloved. It's all good. We'll just throw his jersey on. We don't want to have anything semi-controversial. Nope. They all had Butker jersey on, jerseys on, including Lisa Lopez Galvan's daughter, Adriana. They were proudly sharing her photos in the parking lot yesterday. They had a good time, it looked like. They were talking to the local media, and they were proudly rocking those white Butker jerseys. And as I was at the game last night and Harrison Butker's name was first announced, it was a very clear applause on his behalf. I might have had one or two people who I heard boo, but my goodness, I think they were shamed out of the stadium anyway. There was not a noticeable boo for Harrison Butker last night at all. And it goes to show you, what you see on social media, what's happening with these news outlets covering these stories out of New York and L.A., it's not real life. It's not the world that we're living in here in Kansas City. And that was very evident. And credit to the Lisa Lopez Galvan family for going ahead and handling this the way they saw to handle it last night. And that is by rocking the jersey of their late family member. There's really not a bigger turd on cable news than this guy, Lawrence O'Donnell. I think we should just call him Larry. High bar. Yeah, I know. It is a very high bar, but he is like, oh, he is top of the line, <laughs> MSNBC, you know, just total goober and a half, this guy. Oh, my gosh. So he's got one of these shows. I mean, he makes Joy Reid look like, I'm not saying he makes Joy Reid look reasonable, but he's just, he's a different kind of goober is what I would call him. You know, he comes at it from a totally different angle. But his TDS was on just full blast last night. I saw this this morning since I was at the game last night. I wasn't doing my usual watching MSNBC. I don't actually do that, okay? But I saw the clip this morning. I'm, you know, sleepy and maybe just a tad dragging. Just a tad. Dragging just a hair. It's 7.20. I'm good now. But I'm dragging just a hair, and I see this clip of uh, Larry O'Donnell on MSNBC last night, and he's going off on on Trump about Trump's economic speech that he gave at the Economic Club in New York, which was actually a very good speech. It had the Trump hyperbole. It had all the usual Trump stuff, but the actual substance was really good. And it was Trump being smart. It was Trump staying on point, mixed in with a little hyperbole, and overall, it was a great speech. And he talked about getting the economy back on track, what we need to do, free markets, capitalism. And obviously, those are things that MSNBC just hates, right? They want to talk about price gouging or something. So Lawrence O'Donnell has this clip from last night. And um, since we were all either at the Chiefs game or watching the Chiefs game, you probably missed it since I know that many of you just love watching MSNBC every single weeknight. But I think it's important to play this clip and share it with you. Because it highlights, even when Trump is like just giving a basic speech in economics, they can't give the guy an ounce of credit for anything. I know some smart, rich people. In fact, I think maybe all the rich people I know are smart. Well, that's first off not true. There's plenty of dumb, rich people. But anyway, continue. But there's a lot of stupid, rich people. And New York's stupidest rich people gathered in one room today and proved how stupid they are with reactions like this. Caracas, Venezuela has almost no crime. Next year, I'm going to suggest that the Economic Club hold its meeting in Caracas because we'll be safer than we are in our country if they win. We'll be far safer. Okay, pause it right there. Caracas, Venezuela is what he's referring to there. They have seen a decrease in homicides, but their homicide rate is still fairly high for Latin America. So Larry O'Donnell is going to go off on Trump saying that about, you know, having events in Venezuela over America. But here's the data. Here's the data actually suggests 
He's not all that wrong. Trump, in that case, he's not all that wrong. Okay, um, Kansas City's homicide rate a couple of years ago, or last year when we had our worst year of homicides at almost 190, was about 38 homicides per 100,000 in Kansas City. The Venezuelan crime rate has fallen under 40 homicides per 100,000. Kansas City's at 38 from last year's numbers. So basically, the homicide number in Venezuela is now lower because now it's at 26.8 homicides per 100,000 people. It is now lower than the homicide rate in Kansas City. It is lower than the homicide rate in St. Louis. Now, Trump does the hyperbole thing because that's what he does. And for those of us that just want him to use the data and stick to the facts, it drives us a little nuts sometimes. But his point is more like my opponent's policies are getting American people killed, right? That's the point that Donald Trump's making when he does his hyperbole about next year, we're going to give this speech in Venezuela because it's safer there. And he's making a point that's not a bad point. He, of course, needs to include the facts in his point, but he's not wrong in making the point that some of these blue cities have higher homicide rates, including our town right here than Venezuela does right now. Think about that. Now, just think about how stupid you have to be to say that. See, that's Lawrence (laughs) O'Donnell, who is a very stupid man himself and doesn't realize that the data actually backs up what Donald Trump just said. Crimes down in Venezuela. Yeah. Well, I wonder where those criminals went. Yeah. Oh, Oh. Aurora, Colorado. (laughs) How you doing? Yes. As they are taking over apartment complexes. Hmm. And, and that's the broader point that Trump makes as well. So Lawrence O'Donnell takes that clip from like an hour-long speech that Trump gives at the New York Economic Club and highlights that. And even that thing that Trump said isn't that ridiculous when you put it in the context. Then think about how stupid you have to be to clap for that. I think... Stop. That's why this guy is a joke. Fact checkers on vacation. Yeah, I'm sure they were for MSNBC. They are on a permanent vacation at MSNBC all the time. We just gave you the facts. And what does Lawrence O'Donnell on MSNBC say to someone who gives you the facts? He calls you stupid. Now, when Lawrence O'Donnell says there's a lot of stupid rich people and he hasn't met them, well... He's right. There's a lot of stupid rich people and he has met him because one of them stares at him every day in the mirror.